And welcome back. We're going to look at some highlights from that very tense game. Um, I've, I've promised to keep it short as possible as we've got the next match almost ready to go. So let's just jump straight into highlight one. This was the game one turn, uh, the game one crush guard. Yeah, so it says turn one of Darren's turn in that first matchup. And we can see straight away that that crush guard virus is live there with that scam on the field. Yeah, uh, absolutely brutal as well because uh, he waits for the best possible moment to capitalize on it from... Uh, when his opponent plays Kaleidoscope, knowing that he has a Unicorn in hand. Yep. And that takes away both of his options. Uh, well, it takes away um, Exa as well as a, just a extra casualty of the Crush Guard here. Yeah, I think even just hitting Unicorn would have been... That would have been enough. But he manages to get Exa as well. Absolute yep. casualty of war there. A key thing to note with the Crush Guard is it means in the next turn you can't inflict any battle damage, which is why when we saw his next turn he didn't really do a lot with his Dantes, and we thought it was going to be a really big turn. Mm -hmm. uh, it was because he couldn't inflict any damage. Ah, okay. that's, that's why he didn't yep. make that play. Um, that was an excellent Crush Guard, but uh, the next highlight we're going to go to is highlight number two. And this is actually leads into the winning play. Yeah, so we see here, um, we were talking quite a lot, I, I was talking quite a lot over and over again about how these Dano Magicians were protecting the Dantes so that they could definitely get sent to the graveyard. That's exactly what this Dark Hole does here. So even though the, those Dano Magicians get taken away from the field, they get to use the Dante effects and just replenish the hand of the Burnt US player. Yeah, and it just gives him more options to throw at his opponent and yeah. take him out. Yeah. Uh, the next highlight is from game two. Uh, let's go to highlight three. And it's the mind crush on the kaleidoscope. Yeah. Now uh, here's here's a question. To avoid that, should he have considered playing his preparation rights earlier? I know he'd already used his Bronic for the turn, so really, um, he could have got another Bronic and he'd have had the option to summon it. But is that subpar? Is it better to just let the mind crush resolve? Here? Yeah, I think because he has prep, then it's not that bad to let the mind crush resolve, because then you can just easily get the you you can you can play prep and then do the exact same move again. So I don't know why he didn't do that. He didn't seem to do the exact same move again, and he chose to uh, use Cycle with his Charit, so he could get a Charit Surge. Um, it's actually quite strange. Andrea didn't play Vanity's Emptiness on that. That was quite a quite a strange turn of events there during mm. the game. Absolutely. And we're going to go to the final highlight, and we've got to sorry, I've, we've got to rush through these. Yeah. Uh, this is what I like to call the painful choice: to Valk or not to Valk. That was the question. Yeah. Um, and I was actually just talking to you about this uh, before. I mean, what do you? I know you were really cringing to watch this, but what are your what are your thoughts here? <laughs> it's really tough. There are a lot of cards in Darren's deck that he could have top decked here to get him back into it. He could have played a Mandra Senju and got that uh, Valkyrus out somehow. I, again, my my head was trying to go through every single one of these players to 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 know what he had left in his deck, and it was just it was so difficult to try and even comprehend what he could top deck there to get out of it. I feel the man who's the send you is a Brian Ack to be able to, you know, get onto a a winning play there. But I really think that the Mechwipped engineer was the 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 one that really won the game for yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, what's the alternative here? He does use the uh, the Valkyrus, but then the Mech Equipped Engi uh, Organeer, uh, Engineer, sorry, I'm fuzzling my words, can still detach that graph. Yeah, but and if he draws any level 4 monster, he just makes Cowboy. Is this the alternative play? Yeah, if he plays Valkyrus. Oh, yeah, if he plays the Valkyrus. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Oh, you meant now this play here? Yeah. The, he he made the play where he decides not to use the Valkyrus. Yeah. Uh, in case he actually gets a chance to use the Valkyrus. Yeah. And it doesn't play. He takes the damage and he loses. Yeah. So he would have had to draw a Mandrora Senju, play that, go search for something to allow him to summon the Valkyrus. Um, like, yeah. I just don't think that was the better route. Well, the way I look at it is like even if he didn't do that, um, his opponent was going to get access to that barber and just shoot him with that. Well, no, because Darren had the last turn of time. Right. So when when the Bernie Abyss monster, uh, Bernie Abyss player passed there, that exact last turn where Darren uh, topped the Dark Hole, that was the last turn of time. Yeah. And he would have been able to just summon any level four monster and overlay into Cowboy. Right. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Well, that was the game. Uh, and absolutely intense. Yes. That's, that's all I can say. It was crazy. All right, guys, we're going to jump straight into the next match um, in the very near future, so please stay with us and don't go far.